Are you ready for this? I'm Mike, this is Brian, this is Matt, and we're Ella Titan. We're the co-founders of Max Schwartz. I'm Lydia Winkler. And I'm Marco Nelson, and we're the co-founders of Rent Check. Sorry, I'm closing. I definitely want to offer you guys a spot in the next class. I think I'm ready to make you guys an official offer. Techstar's contribution to these companies is pretty huge. I really admire them for putting themselves out there. I'm so excited to see what the future holds for all 10 companies. I know they're going to blow it out. What'd you think? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Techstars Atlanta Demo Day 2019. Thank you so much for being here tonight to support these great founders. My name is Dave Payne, and I'm the new managing director of Techstars Atlanta. I've been in the Atlanta startup community for about 20 years, starting various things and helping founders. When Michael Cohn, the previous managing director, announced he wasn't coming back after his third year, I threw my hat in the ring because I saw the incredible impact Techstars was having on the local startup ecosystem. I'll talk a little more about that later in the show, but first. Right before this year's class arrived at Pont City Market, I put this poster up on the wall of my office. For those who might not be able to read it, it says, if you can't ride two elephants at the same time, what are you doing at the circus? It's a quote from a well-known venture capitalist. I wanted to show you this to give you a sense of what these founders have been going through over the last 90 days. Techstars packs a year's worth of progress into just three months. Every day is like a week as founders are meeting with mentors, trying to grow their business, trying to hire, meeting with me, meeting with investors, and getting ready for demo day. There's one night every week where the entire class comes up in front, where the founders come up in front of the entire class to give them an update, to give everyone an update on their progress the, uh, the, over the past week. On the last slide of that update, the founder puts a picture or GIF that describes how they felt that week. Here are a few that I pulled from the last month of the program. Week to week, founders go from this there's a new app version that's way too buggy to this, deciding they're gonna sell and that's what everyone's gonna do for the whole week to this, a demo day narrative that just starts to come together to this, <laughs> an emotion that's difficult to describe if you've never been a founder. He, I like how he yells mom at the, at the end. To this, finally finding a growth channel that allowed this startup to grow 500% just while they were in the program. Techstars has a saying that you'll see above this poster called, do more faster. Our founders definitely did more faster this year, and I couldn't be more proud of this class. So how did we choose the class? When I took over the program in January, I decided I would focus exclusively on recruiting in the Southeast. So I went to 16 cities in the South over nine weeks. We contacted about 700 founders. I personally met with 300 of them. We got down to a top 30, and then we made offers to the top 10. So what you're seeing tonight is the top 1.5% of what I saw. The best of the best. Once this class was finalized, I asked a trusted investor how she would characterize my class. She described the class as real products for real people. I really like that. And I think it fits well into the startup ecosystem in Atlanta, solving real problems for people, the kinds of businesses that can be successful anywhere in the country, not just small pockets of the country with the most tech savvy. 
Thanks so much for everyone for being here tonight. I'll be back a little later in the show. When I meet with people, they often ask me, what is it that makes Techstars so special? Is it our founders, our mentors, our corporate partners, our community leaders, all of the above? It's about the power of networks, but not just any network. Techstars is the worldwide network that helps entrepreneurs succeed. Demo Day is special because it's a milestone, a symbolic step in the entrepreneur's journey, a time to reflect on growth, to share visions for the road ahead. We're here because we believe helping entrepreneurs leads to a better future. So for every step of the journey, the Techstars Network is here to support you. Whether attending a Techstars community event, joining a Techstars mentorship-driven accelerator, or becoming a Techstars corporate innovation partner, or raising capital from the Techstars Network, we help entrepreneurs make connections and access resources. From idea to IPO. Who's next? Good evening, good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for, for coming and attending. Um, quick shout out to my kids who make, wanted to make sure I represented Atlanta properly and chose my walkout music, a little Migos, so <laughs> thank you, Jack and Pete. <laughs> so, so, so my name is Scott Ford, and I work out of the, the Boulder office where we're headquartered. And, and coming to Demo Day is, is the favorite part of my day. Like, I love coming to these events, and I've traveled all over the world doing these things. And the thing that I enjoy most about it is just seeing you know, the passion, the enthusiasm in the, in the eyes of, of, of these founders, and you're gonna see that as well tonight. You know, I started working at early stage companies back in the, the late 90s, founded my first company in 2003, and it's amazing to see the evolution of uh, startup communities and ecosystems that have evolved since then. Um, with the advent of more available capital and angel funding, it allows more people to embark on this journey we call entrepreneurship. And that's what makes it so fun for me. So today is not the end. Today is an event. Uh, but what's really going to happen is, is they're going to really start their journey. And that journey starts with fundraising. That's the next thing. So companies going through Techstars accelerators, on average, raise over a million dollars in funding. Collectively, those startups have raised over $8 billion in funding. So I want to pause for a second. Companies who have gone through Techstars accelerators have raised over $8 billion in funding. It's something we're incredibly proud of, and we try to play a part in through our venture funds, uh, where we invest at the accelerator level. And the collective total of our portfolio now is over $24 billion. But today is, is not about tech stars. It's about these founders. It's about this program. It's about these 10 great companies. And you're going to see them come out, and they're going to pitch, and they're going to uh, show you amazing things. But one thing I want to highlight is Techstars supports the community in other ways as well. So we have our 50 accelerators. This is one of, of uh, 50. And I'm excited to say there's actually 13 of these demo days going on this week. So that's 130 new companies joining the Techstars family. Uh, but in addition, we do Startup Week and Startup Weekend. We do 1,000 Startup Weekends around the globe in about 120 countries. And so I have some breaking news. For the first time, we are going to have Techstars Startup Week Atlanta uh, coming here in the spring that I'm very excited about. So yes. So, so, so before I go, I'd like to issue a challenge. And I can't see everyone up there, but you're all, in, all invited to this challenge. My challenge is to do one thing for one of these companies. Make an introduction. Give them some advice. Buy their product. Imagine how powerful that would be if everyone in this room just did one thing to help these companies. That's the power of the network. That's the power of Techstars. And that's something I didn't have when I was a founder, and it's why I'm so passionate about our mission to be the worldwide network that helps entrepreneurs succeed. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. One of the things I really like about the Rent Check solution is the fact that they're tackling an area with deposit control that I haven't seen any other providers solutioning to yet. And so while everyone's working toward digital transformation, really haven't seen someone tackle the 33% of deposit disputes that you see out there. I just think they're really evolving their thinking from not just from a renter perspective, 
but what value does this bring to the property manager? And then how do they make this a win-win solution for both parties? So very excited to see startups like this um, solving some of these problems. I'm now pleased to introduce the Rent Check team. Crush it, guys. That's the apartment. Three years ago, after my first year of law school, it came time to move, and my landlord tried to keep my deposit. But she didn't know who she was messing with. It was $1,600. That was a lot of money to me. I decided it would be an injustice not to pursue it. So I represented myself, and I sued my former landlord. I took her to court, and I won. And I won because I took photos when I moved out. The whole process took a year and a half. This was time consuming and stressful. But that feeling of injustice stuck with me. And a year later, I met a classmate of mine in my MBA program who had been managing properties for 10 years. He too faced similar problems, documenting apartments to avoid disputes and litigation. Documenting properties is time consuming and expensive because an employee has to be there and it's inaccurate. I'm Lydia Winkler. I'm the co-founder of RentCheck and I've been a renter for the past 10 years. And that classmate I mentioned, that's Marco Nelson. He's my co-founder. And together, we're solving disputes between landlords and renters, which is a massive problem. There are 18 million renters that move each year. 30% of those renters will have a dispute with their landlord over a deposit, which creates a $5.5 billion tug of war over deposit deductions. The root of the problem is this. Move in and move out inspections are done on pen and paper. It's impossible to use written words to accurately verify the condition of what you've seen with your own eyes because it's subjective. And this creates disputes, lawsuits, the experience I had. It's 2019 and 90% of inspections are done this way. So how did we solve this? RentCheck is a platform where landlords and residents can request and conduct high quality rental inspections for any property with just your phone. It's simple. Room by room, RentCheck guides residents through an apartment, telling them what to document, prompting them to rate the condition, and ask specific questions, ensuring nothing is missed. RentCheck enables property managers to outsource inspections to residents, reducing the risk of litigation while giving renters peace of mind. It's the tech we've built that's giving property managers back a valuable asset, time. And property managers love it. Since starting Techstars, we've gone from 600 to over 3,000 units under management, and that's just inbound. That's a 5x increase. And while people are coming to us, we're not waiting for them. We have as, we, sorry. We just started a direct outbound B2B sales process these last three weeks. And we already engaged with property management companies with over 12,000 units, and they have indicated that they wanna move forward. And on the indirect side, I have two great announcements to share with you today. We've partnered with two major market players in the multifamily space who truly care about the resident life cycle, 365 Connect and Cox Communications. 365 Connect is a software platform and we will be fully embedded into their product. Between these two partners, we have a line to seamlessly provide rent check to their customers across four million units. As we roll out these partnerships, we're on track to hit 60,000 units by June 2020. There are two primary markets. The first is the individual landlords, and the second is the professional property management market. We have solution for both sides. In addition to that, what's amazing is residents are coming to us on their own. They're doing inspections and referring their property managers. We wanna keep our business model simple. 
We charge property managers a dollar per unit per month, but we're experimenting with pricing optimization. So you're probably wondering, how big is the rental inspection market? Digitizing rental inspections is a $580 million market. This market is truly untapped because current solutions haven't built a compelling platform that includes residents. Only 10% of the market is using some sort of digital inspection. Rent check is bringing digital inspections to every resident with a phone. And that's only the beginning. Consumers are used to documenting, renting, and reviewing their goods and experiences. After you ride a scooter, you take a photo. After you take a lift, you rate your driver. Following a short-term stay, you rate your host. Industries are being disrupted where transparency is the new norm and consumers are utilizing items they do not own. But long-term renting is still an experience filled with distrust. The long-term rental space is a $100 billion market and growing every day. Rental inspections are just one part of the resident life cycle. We're focused on inspections, but our customers are telling us they're looking for a unified solution. By positioning ourselves at the center of the landlord-renter relationship, we're in a better position than anyone to deliver better adjacent solutions to residents while making it advantageous to property managers. So how do we get there? It's the team behind the vision. I was an early employee at a Bay Area startup that was acquired. And while enrolled in both law school and business school at the same time, I started two separate ventures. My co-founder and CEO, Marco Nelson, knows how to lead and execute. He's a Naval Academy grad who spent seven years leading soldiers. He loves building things. He's built homes, teams, and apps. We are the starting five. We have an amazing team from diverse backgrounds with great startups, schools, and major corporations. So where are we today? We raised a million dollars this past May. We see a big opportunity and we're positioned to accelerate. If you're an investor or in the property management space and like what we're doing, let's have a conversation. Renting a home is one of the most intimate consumer experiences. It's where you spend the most time, have life's most important milestones. Although we started with my story, I went at it alone, but now you don't have to. Thank you. I am working with the team Bundle, and I have really enjoyed the experience. Bundle is an online marketplace where moms and families can sell all the clothes and all the kids' stuff that's been accumulating in the closets and in the basement and the attic. But it's done so in a far more organized format. Uh, if you try to sell today in one of the many marketplaces around, there's a lot of friction, there's a lot of problems that pop up. The way they've designed this, it's supposed to be as seamless and easy as possible. As someone who is in the marketplace, who has young children, this is exactly what I've been looking for. I hope that Bundle is a smashing success and it becomes the number one destination for resale for moms and families. I am pleased to introduce the co-founder and CEO of Bundle, Colin Sanders. The mic is yours. If you're a parent in the audience, I bet you recognize scenes like this, and this, and this. These are the hordes of clothes that accumulate as your kids get older. This is a widespread issue that every parent deals with. What if I told you that a local mom in your community would come to your house and offer you the choice to donate or be paid a lump sum to take that clutter off your hands? After all, the average household spends $1,800 a year alone on kids' apparel. Why not recoup some of that money or give back to your community in the most convenient way possible? As a father of two, I have personally experienced the clutter that amasses as my kids get older. And unfortunately, I've experienced the work and confusion it takes in getting rid of that clutter. And this is where Bundle was born. Through hundreds of interviews with moms and consignment stores across the country, I heard comments just like these over and over again. There's so many options, I just don't know where to start. It's exhausting playing the is this still available and when can we meet game on Facebook. Craigslist and eBay are inefficient and outdated and Poshmark's 75 million listings make finding what I'm looking for nearly impossible. So what do we all do when we've all had enough of that clutter? 
the annual haul to Goodwill to dump loads of valuable clothing off at their doorstep. At Bundle, we're dedicated to solving this problem, and we believe the solution lies right in your local community. My name's Colin Sanders, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Bundle. I started my first business in ninth grade, and I've been obsessed with entrepreneurship and problem solving for as long as I can remember. Bundle's dedicated to making resale simpler for moms. With Bundle, all you do is download the Bundle app, and you can be connected with your closest Bundle partner. Bundle partners are moms looking to make side or replacement incomes. Bundle partners do all of the heavy lifting for you, taking your gently loved clothing and merchandising it on our app to resell. You are one click away from decluttering hassle-free. You will have a real conversation with the real person who lives right in your local community. Not only are you decluttering with little to no effort, but you're also helping support a local mom grow their business. Take a look at how easy this works. After downloading the Bundle app, you have the option of being connected with the Bundle partner. After provi providing a little bit of information on what you're getting rid of, a Bundle partner will be notified and can deny or accept your request. After accepting your request, you'll be sent to a private chat to handle the coordination of the handoff. We also have group commerce functionality. When listing items, our Bundle partners can list to specific groups they've created or to the general marketplace. So how do we make money? We charge a 10% transaction fee on every order. In return for Bundle supporting our Bundle partners, our Bundle partners become extensions of us all across the country. Our Bundle partners will source new items, curate the best items, store those items, and fulfill customers' orders. To kickstart distribution, we focus on highly influential power sellers. But don't take my word for it. Let's hear from the first million dollar seller on a resale platform. Hey there, Suzanne Cannon here, and I just wanted to say how excited I am about hearing about Bundle. Since I started selling seven years ago after my second child was born, I've had a lot of great success, but I felt like something was missing in resale. Bundle addresses so many of those issues, and I'm loving using it. Suzanne's Closet has a collective following of over one million loyal customers. Those customers will proudly be following Suzanne over to the Bundle platform. We're the only team to get into this year's Techstars Atlanta program with no product. In 90 days, we've gone from our first line of code to a live product on the App Store. Thank you. Even better, we have 300 bundle partners signed up on our wait list and are onboarding 20 new sellers a day. And this isn't surprising. Take a look at some of these recent headlines. Resale is expected to be bigger than fast fashion in 10 years. Today, the market's a $25 billion industry slated to more than double to over $53 billion by 2023. Last year alone, 56 million women bought secondhand in America, up 12 million from the year prior. This is a true shift in the way we buy. We've put together a stellar team to get the job done. Our CTO and co-founder, Kevin Sun, brings five years of startup experience to Bundle. Kevin was the founding engineer of a successful startup called Sales Equity, and his unique blend of tech and business are a tremendous asset to Bundle. Bundle was created to give families an efficient way to declutter while providing moms an opportunity to make money while gaining time with those who matter most. I invite you to join us on our journey as we create thousands of entrepreneurs across the country. Download the app today and experience the Bundle difference for yourself. Thank you. The easiest way to describe Elotype is they are an automated marketing monitoring tool. So they connect to uh, most major digital platforms and are able to put checks and monitors in place to allow you to either one, make sure everything's operating correctly or your performance is hitting its goals. Every agency, every marketer should look at Elotype as a tool that'll help them improve the performance of their marketing campaigns. Because that's, at the end of the day, as a marketer, that's what it's all about. It's all about driving results, driving the business, and this is a tool that'll help you do that. I could see Elotype becoming the industry standard for how digital monitoring is conducted in the future and for also creating bespoke products for agencies that really need something that's specialized to make sure that they're actually getting to their customers' problems. So I'm super proud to hand it over to Mike and the Elotype team. I'm really proud of you guys and what you've accomplished through the Techstars program. Crush it. This year, the inevitable will finally happen. Digital advertising will surpass traditional advertising. And the rapid rise in digital advertising has been accompanied by an equally dramatic rise 
in the marketing technology that supports it. In fact, did you know there's over 7,000 different marketing technologies out there? And these tools are becoming increasingly more technical and sophisticated by the day. Believe it or not, the average marketing team has to jump through 91 different marketing tools, making the campaigns they support increasingly more complicated to manage at scale. Now, in marketing agencies, they're on the front lines. Things are moving pretty fast, and they're just trying to keep pace. Let me show you what it's like for them. Today's digital ad agencies, they operate like a big production line. New clients are constantly coming down the conveyor belt, which means hundreds of campaigns and thousands of new ads need to be launched and managed and monitored every single day. Oftentimes, the difference between a successful marketer and a marketer who's out of a job is being able to quickly recognize and fix problems or take advantage of opportunities that might be passing them by. Now, today's campaigns, they're not set it and forget it. They require constant attention. And if the teams aren't careful, things start to slip. And when things start to slip, well, bad things can happen. Ad costs can spike unexpectedly. Optimizations can have unintended side effects. Tracking codes can go haywire. Dollars can be wasted, opportunities are missed, and clients can be lost. Now, I know a lot of marketing professionals who feel like this, and I think there's a better way. My name is Michael Sengbush, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Elotype, and we are the smartest way to stay on top of your marketing campaigns. First, allow me to introduce my team. These are my partners, Matt Leadham and Brian Mullaney. We all met at Georgia Tech over 20 years ago, and we've been friends and colleagues ever since. We are all startup veterans, and we're all software engineers by trade, so we got into marketing technology as technologists. So we had a unique ability to see this industry becoming rapidly more technical and sophisticated by the day. We knew that today's marketing professionals were gonna have to become better equipped to manage and monitor today's multi-channel marketing campaigns at scale. So we built them some help. Elotype is an intelligent monitoring and alerting solution that's rapidly becoming the secret weapon behind consistent and positive campaign performance. We're working with some of the top digital ad agencies, monitoring all their search, social, and email marketing campaigns, ensuring that their teams never miss a beat. Our AI-enabled digital marketing assistant analyzes over 1 million marketing data points per day for over 10,000 different marketing campaigns, giving marketing teams the confidence to know that someone's always gonna be on call even when they're not. We're helping these teams drive down costs, increase their return on ad spend by proactively identifying problems and opportunities that may have otherwise been missed. Now, here's the best part. Elotype not only helps marketing teams work, Elotype helps where marketing teams work. And that's through messaging platforms like Slack. We weren't surprised when we realized that 95% of marketing agencies use Slack. So it's also not surprising that Slack likes what we're doing as well. Elotype saves everyone time and energy that's better applied to the more creative, important, and enjoyable parts of your job. Now, I'm glad Slack likes what we're doing, but more importantly, our customers like us too. And so with that, let me show you how today's digital marketing agencies are using the Elotype Digital Assistant. This is Karen. Her team manages over 100 digital marketing campaigns. Now, rather than logging in and looking at a dashboard and checking thousands of data points every day, she just asks her Elotype Digital Assistant how are my campaigns performing? She gets an answer. She gets a curated daily summary, identifying the top two problems that are having the biggest impact on the bottom line for her team. And her team's already taking care of it. Now, we don't only just enter, uh, identify problems. We also capture opportunities. And we've captured some good news that she can pass on to her client on her call today and it's 100% messaging-based. 
No additional tools, no additional logins, and it all works directly through their favorite messaging platform. So far this year, we've formed partnerships with Facebook and Google, HubSpot and MailChimp, CallRail, and of course, Slack. The Elotype Digital Assistant connects directly to your search, social, and email marketing campaigns. And we charge our customers on a per connection basis. So if you're an agency and you have 10 clients, and you're running Google and Facebook marketing campaigns for all of them, you would buy 20 connections to your Elotype Digital Assistant. Now, small agencies may only manage a handful of connections, but large agencies can manage hundreds, even thousands of connections. Oftentimes, at a large agency, they're going to have proprietary data feeds or custom analytics solutions. That's OK. We can monitor those as well. Since we launched our MVP last year, we've had steady growth. But in the past four months, something truly amazing has happened. We have tripled the number of teams using Elotype. Today, there's over 400 teams using the Yellowtype Digital Assistant, and at the current rate, we're on pace to surpass 1,000 teams by the end of the year. As new agencies roll on, they add more and more connections. And the more connections they add, the smarter the Yellowtype Digital Assistant gets. It's continuously learning the unique needs of each campaign and each team. Soon, we'll be able to apply this intelligence dynamically to adjust budgets, optimize targeting, pause ineffective campaigns, and launch new strategies on the fly. We face a future where marketing technology will continue to innovate at a rapid pace. While this has created better and more effective marketing campaigns, the operational teams that are on the production line are increasingly becoming left behind, unless we help them out. Just like how PagerDuty uses messaging and machine learning to monitor servers and databases, and how Betterment and Wealthfront use AI to automate your financial investments. So too will Elotype monitor and manage your marketing investments. Combining AI, learned intelligence, real-time monitoring, delivered inside the tools that every marketing agency already knows and loves, we are the key to ensuring teams can keep pace, do more with less, and maintain a competitive edge. And that's because the Elotype Digital Assistant is more than just another piece of marketing technology. It's truly a part of your marketing team. And we would love to have all of you on our team as well. Elotype is free for your first connection, and you can download it from our website or find us in the Slack app directory. Thank you very much. I'm mentoring Max Rewards, and I've had an amazing experience with Anik and company. There are 183 million credit cards in the US, and they are an app that wants to make people better users of their credit cards. So they help you find the best card for you to use based on your spending. They help you maximize those cards to get the best value out of them. Uh, Anik and I worked at Accenture together a few years ago, and he's doing exactly what he said he would be doing and what he dreamed of doing years ago. I think short term, uh, they continue to help credit card users get the most out of their cards. Today it's an app for credit cards, and tomorrow, uh, who knows what it will be, but it will definitely be empowering people in the purchasing uh, and financial decisions that they make. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Max Rewards. Anik and David, show them what you got. I like credit cards, and it's a good bet that most of you do too. Credit cards are some of our most intimate financial products. We use them almost every day. On average, we have about four cards and spend more than $20,000 on them. However, although we put more than 90% of our card spend on reward cards, we earn just a small fraction of the rewards we could be earning. Why? Because credit cards are also some of our most sophisticated financial products. They come with dynamic rewards and benefit programs that make it incredibly difficult to figure out the right card to use for every purchase. And so, we have a choice of either losing time keeping up with our cards or losing money for going the decision altogether. Hi, I'm Anik Khan, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Max Rewards. I saw a better way. I realized that much of what I did to earn over $25,000 in rewards could be automated and made accessible to everyone. Max Rewards is the first app that helps you make smarter financial decisions with your credit cards. We keep up with your cards and crunch the rules so you don't have to. Let me show you how it works by taking a trip to the mall. We'll see how we can maximize our rewards at Macy's. When I pull up the app, I can see that uh, the app has figured out exactly where I'm at and shown me businesses around me. At Macy's, I should use my Chase Freedom. When I click in, I can see exactly why. 
the 9% I get back on my freedom far exceeds the rewards on any of my other cards. Behind the scenes, Max Rewards is automatically activated the revolving category for this quarter. It's also calculated the value of my points and evaluated other factors like spending limits to automatically determine the best card at Macy's at this time. Let's drill over to Madewell, another clothing retailer. I should be using the same card, right? Actually, by using my Amex Blue Cash Preferred, I could save up to 20%. Most of us have personalized offers on our cards, but they're hidden away in our bank's website and need to be manually activated. Well, no more. We automatically activate your offers, incorporate them into best card recommendations, and aggregate them all in one place. These are your personalized offer, and we're finally making it easy for you to use them. In the future, we'll also be sending relevant, uh, intelligent alerts for relevant offers, helping you discover more deals and helping you save more money every single day. So how do we make all of this happen? We build proprietary integrations with the nation's top issuers. These integrations enable us to pull more data per account than any other company in the world. And we currently support 70% of all cards with these premium integrations. By the end of the year, we'll support 90%. We launched Max Rewards at the end of July, shortly after starting Techstars. In just over two months, we've grown over 500%. We now have over 3,000 users and track over $4 million in rewards. We work with the top credit card and finance influencers to promote our app. Our conversion rate in this channel has been so effective, our cost of customer acquisition is less than a dollar. These influencers have a reach of millions of viewers, helping us get to scale quickly and at a low cost. Our app is currently free, but rolling out a monetization strategy later this month. The way it works is very simple. When you save money, we charge you a fee that's equivalent to a portion of your savings. It aligns your interests with ours because we only make money when we can save you money. In the future, we'll also curate our own deals. This will give us access to revenue that's currently collected by banks and deal aggregators like Cardlytics. In this model, you keep all of your savings, and we charge a fee to retailers in the back end. This is an incredible opportunity. By influencing real-world behavior, we can capture a portion of the $6 trillion spent annually on debit and credit cards, the vast majority of which is done in person. Our model is also quite unique in the industry. Almost everyone else gets a kickback for recommending new products. And you're interested in opening a new product maybe 1% of the time. The other 99% of the time, you're just not interested. Whereas you are interested in getting more from your existing financial products 100% of the time. This means we win your headspace. And that's very important because credit cards are just the beginning. We want to help you make smarter financial decisions throughout your entire life. From when you get a car insurance, to when you get a mortgage, to when you protect the ones you love with life insurance, we want to be the trusted advisor in your pocket. And we have the team to execute our vision. I was a former strategy consultant and started my first business at 14. My co-founder, David Gao, previously worked at VMware. He's a security expert and true life hacker. He's earned over $15,000 in credit card rewards and won over $20,000 playing trivia apps. We're supported by an incredible team of advisors who come from the top finance, technology, and consumer companies. We're Max Rewards. We empower you to make smarter financial decisions easier. Today, we're helping you get more from your credit cards. Tomorrow, we'll help you get more from all of your financial products. I want you to make, take, I want you to make a smart financial decision today by downloading our app right now. I'm Anik Khan. Thank you very much. As a founder, I am constantly out doing demos and at farmer's markets trying to get the word out about our product. And it's really frustrating um, to know that we've got all these customers out there who really want our product, but we just can't open the retail accounts fast enough. WeStock has helped us put our strongest asset as a uh, company to work, which is our customers. Being able to have access to data, getting qualified leads, and getting that interaction with customers has really put us in a strong position to take our business to the next level. The team at WeStock is a game changer for companies like mine, for consumers, and retailers. And that's why I'm so happy to introduce Cameron McCarthy, CEO and co-founder of WeStock. Go get them, Cameron.
the milkman. This guy had a maid. He drove around all day making deliveries to friendly faces, and all he had to do was deliver one product. Good old fashioned whole milk. I mean, could you imagine being a milkman today? You would have to carry over a hundred different varieties of milk just to make your customers happy. You've got almond milk, oat milk, flax milk, and yes, sometimes even banana milk. These are the products that customers are demanding today. This is just one example of a legacy industry losing market share because of changing consumer preferences. Over the last decade, $18 billion has shifted from large legacy brands to small and emerging brands. But this shift isn't happening fast enough. And 75% of emerging brands are still destined to fail. You see, the problem is founders like Bess build large, loyal followings of brand fanatics and have thousands of engaged customers, but are in a daily battle for shelf space. And with 85% of consumers still preferring to shop in store, the problem is pretty simple. How do we take consumer demand and convert it into retail sales? My name is Cameron McCarthy, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of WeStock. And the reason why I care so deeply about this problem is because it happened to me. Before starting WeStock, I worked for one of the fastest growing food brands in the country. My first week on that job, we were on Shark Tank. And that next morning, we had thousands of customers asking us where they could find our products, how they could support us, and when we'd be available near them. I felt absolutely helpless. I had no way of capturing this demand for our product and effectively showing it to the retail buyer. I knew that I wasn't alone and that thousands of other brands had this exact same problem. And that's when I came up with the concept for crowd stocking. Wait for it. What if we just asked the customers what they wanted? That's it. That's simple. Think about it. Retailers could carry the exact products their customers wanted. You, the consumer, could easily support your favorite brands. And brands, well, they could grow their sales as they grew their followers. We knew the quickest way to this vision was through the brands, who had already cultivated a large group of loyal followers. WeStock is a SaaS marketing tool that lets brands streamline the product request process and turn it into an engine for growth for their business, whether it's through their email campaigns, social media, or their website, Brands can easily see where their customers want their products stocked. We capture their preferred store, location, desired products, and a host of other analytics about that customer and turn it into an actionable data set for our brand partners. We then go a step further by providing them with the buyer contact information and a personalized cold email, making it easier than ever for brands to reach out to retail buyers. Armed with this information, the retail buyer can de-risk their decision-making process and order new products with confidence. And best of all, you, the consumer, are notified and rewarded the moment the product hits the shelf. Now our go-to-market strategy since day one has been focused on partnering with emerging brands that have large loyal followings who easily understand our value proposition. We charge these brands between $99 and $199 a month to have access to the WeStock tool set. Since launching in just February of this year, We've already partnered with over 200 brands and captured over 30,000 requests for our brand partners. When we, were, when we started Techstars, we weren't generating revenue. And now, we're on pace at $5,000 in monthly reoccurring revenue this month alone. <laughs> with a line of sight to $20,000 by the end of February. Now, I can't stress this last part enough. Small brands are not small business. If we capture just a fraction of the 125,000 brands that we can start selling to today, we can start solving the $167 billion problem for retailers, consumers, and brands when it comes to not stocking the correct product at the store level. Now, we've put together the perfect team to solve this problem. I've been in the food and beverage industry for the past eight years, amassing over $40 million in retail sales and working with every large retailer across this country, I know exactly the pain points we're solving for and how to scale this business quickly. My co-founder, Dmitry Shemaev, 
has over five plus years of mobile technology experience, building software for retail with a focus on product recommendations. Now, I know that this last part's gonna be a little sad for you all to hear, but the milkman, he probably doesn't have a future. But we truly believe that crowd stocking is the future. And by empowering emerging brands and their customers, that we stock can lead the way. We are so excited to announce here tonight that we have some of our very own Atlanta brand partners in the lobby sampling our, their products for you tonight. So please get a chance to try them out, and please remember to always support your favorite brands with WeStock whenever possible. Thank you, and have a great night. A few weeks ago, this article came out. Something like this is written every few months about Atlanta. Atla Atlanta has been the capital of the South for decades. Now Atlanta is also the hub for technology startups in the Southeast and becoming one of the main startup cities across the country. When I started my startup 10 years ago, pretty much what was going on in Atlanta was around Georgia Tech, just a few kind of startup efforts around Georgia Tech. Fast forward to today and the startup scene is 10 times better in all respects. More startup hubs, more mentors giving back, more investors and more founders. And over the last four years, Techstars has become one of the programs having the biggest impact on our city. This program touches hundreds of startups, hundreds of mentors, and hundreds of founders all over the city every year. And this would not have been possible without the support of Cox Enterprises. Alex Taylor's vision for our local startup ecosystem and the support of everyone at Cox has made this possible. Cox is having a huge impact on the Atlanta startup ecosystem with all of the programs they're supporting across Atlanta. With that, I'd like to introduce to the stage Alex Taylor, President and CEO of Cox Enterprises. Evening, everybody. It's great to see you. Um, it is, uh, it's great to be here, and it's really great to see another packed house here at the Tabernacle and, and uh, see lots of friendly and familiar faces. Um, this has become like my favorite time of the year, and it's not just because uh, the fall colors are coming out and the temperature's finally dropping, but uh, this event has become kind of a milestone for the startup scene, and it's one of several uh, that this uh, time of the year kicks off. There's six or seven or maybe eight startup events that you'll see here in Atlanta uh, over the course of this month and next month that you wouldn't have seen uh, five or ten years ago. And it makes me think back to when we first started this event, the thinking, um, was about five years ago. This is the, the fourth of the, uh, of the cycle. And uh, five years ago, we were thinking to ourselves, uh, what do we want to accomplish? What are the things that Cox Enterprises is all about? And first is, we acknowledge that the economy is changing, and so many ideas that slide about 7,000 um, uh, marketing and IT solutions that were out there was a real eye-opener. But there's so many new companies out there and so much new technology. How do we invest into them? And uh, one of the things we really like about Techstars is it gives us an opportunity to see the vetting process for hundreds of companies that finally get down to the ultimate 10. And uh, we invest in every single one of them, and we love our uh, Techstars uh, investments. But the good news is they don't need it. The, uh, I'm sure they appreciate it, but the 30 companies that have already been through the Techstars program have raised cumulatively over $50 million uh, without our help. And that, and that is probably the coolest thing. So congratulations to all the folks that have been through Techstars already. The other thing we wanted to do was try to do our part to help make Atlanta a cool place to be for startups. Um, five, 10 years ago, you would never see Atlanta on a list of startup communities. And I always thought that was kind of sad. You know, we're, we're the home to 16 Fortune 500 companies. We have some of the most iconic brands in the country and in the world. We, um, uh, we have great companies here, but connecting those companies to all the ideas that are coming out, you don't want people leaving here and going off somewhere else uh, to get funding for a great idea. You want them to have it right here. And a lot is changing in Atlanta over the last five to 10 years. Um, I was amazed to find out last year that more movies and TV shows and filming is going on in Atlanta and Georgia than there is in Hollywood. Um, in fact, last year, I, for the first time, I might be completely out to lunch, but I heard the term Yollywood. Has everyone, anyone heard that? <laughs> I hope I'm not the only one that hadn't heard that, but we have become Yollywood. 
And, uh, and I think that's, that's extremely cool. So lots of things are happening, and, and I think it's important that um, uh, the new economy and this be a good place for, for startups. Earlier this year, there was an article in USA Today that referred to um, Atlanta as the, um, the Silicon Valley of the South. Um, if you go onto Google right now and type in the Silicon Valley of the South, you'll get a couple of different articles that come up, but in more than a couple of them, um, you, get, uh, you get Atlanta, which is, which is super cool to me. The third thing that we are trying to do is trying to help Cox Enterprises and our company and our employees and our ethos stay close to the startup scene. Uh, th this year was our biggest year ever as a company. We surpassed or approached, I'll have to ask our CFO here, but about $21 billion in revenues. And um, it's our biggest year ever, and it's great news. But the bigger we get, one of the concerns I have is that there are so many levels of our organization and the distance between the top and the, the, the ground floor uh, becomes greater and greater. And I never want us to forget that it wasn't, it was 120 years ago, so I don't wanna say it wasn't that long ago, but it wasn't so long ago that my great-grandfather founded the business and it was just him and four other people in a small office in Dayton, Ohio, trying to make a newspaper that was losing money work. And um, a story that kind of feeds into that is, is interesting, and I'll, I'll close out, but has anybody seen Ken Burns' uh, new documentary on the history of country music? I saw it, um, I, was, I was blown away. If you watch the first episode, you are led to believe, and I guess is the case, that Atlanta was really the home of, if you follow country music all the way back to the beginning, people were leaving the rural life behind in the 20s and 30s, and they were coming in from the farms and moving into Atlanta, and there was a guy named Fiddlin' Jack Carson, and they said that uh, he used to whoop it up in bars and stuff, and everybody loved him and talked about him, but then a new technology came out, and it, <laughs> that's right, we got a WSB fan over here. Um, the, the, uh, the Atlanta Journal, the newspaper that we love and have owned since 1939, launched uh, the South's first major radio station, WSB, Welcome South Brother, and uh, Fiddlin' Jack Carson was put on there, and I remember you know, that was the public story, but one of the stories I know from, from being at the company is that back in the day, radio did not make any money at all. It was, they said, we were just trying things, we were experimenting, we were putting people on the radio to do crazy stuff. We had the dancing cowboy, we had uh, people that would read the newspaper, we had people like Fiddle and Jack Carson, and we were doing anything we could to try to, try to make money. Um, but Ken Burns followed the country music all the way back to the beginning and found out that, uh, you know, you might think it all started on WSB radio. And uh, it reminds me that that was a diversification play. My great-grandfather was always a newspaper person, but his son believed things have to change. People aren't gonna be reading newspapers forever. And so uh, he launched, you know, they launched radio and then later launched WSB TV, which was the first major market TV station anywhere in the country. Didn't make any money, it was a big risk. Uh, my grandmother tells me that when her father broke ground at the WSB uh, with the shovel, he said, uh, to her or somebody around him, he said, I don't know if this TV thing is ever gonna work out. Um, <laughs> but TV is now one of the biggest industries in the, in the world. But, um, so it's really exciting. Um, we have done a lot as a city. We have become a different city. We have emerged, you know, Hollywood has become Yollywood. And I think tonight we can, we can say that Palo Alto might just become Palo Yalto. So, <laughs> Without further ado, I'd like to welcome up um, Atticus from PadSplit, who's gonna give us an update on one of the biggest success stories from last year's Techstars. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Alex, for the opportunity. To, great to be back. If you remember last year, I introduced you to Laura. She's a pastry chef at a university in Midtown Atlanta. And with her income, her best alternative for housing, unfortunately left her with an hour and a half commute each way from Griffin, Georgia. In the summers, when school was out and hours got cut, she couldn't even afford that. She was forced to spend most nights sleeping in the airport lobby. She's not even alone. She's one of 180,000 singles and couples in Metro Atlanta and 14 million around the country that lack the income for decent housing. The problem for Laura is that based on her income, she needed an apartment in the city for $500. Those simply don't exist, leaving her with terrible options that force her to choose between housing, too far away, or being homeless and close to her job. And the government cannot solve this problem. Even HUD Secretary Carson has acknowledged that there isn't enough money available to address the shortage, instead calling for zoning deregulation and private innovation to come to the rescue. 
We're proud to be one of those innovations. And I'm happy to say that Laura is still with us almost two years later. She's still, <laughs> she still pays $500 a month for a fully furnished room, including all utilities, Wi-Fi, and laundry. And it's still only a 15 minute bus ride to her job in Midtown, meaning for the first time in her life, she can still continue build savings. My name is Atticus LeBlanc, and I'm the founder of PadSplit. I've been an affordable housing developer in Atlanta for more than a decade, and I understood the challenges of people like Laura. But I also understood the motivations of real estate investors, and I wanted a solution that could align incentives across both groups. So I created PadSplit, where we can house 50 people for the same amount it costs the federal government in Atlanta to house one. And we've received zero dollars in public subsidy to date. PadSplit has created an entire new category of privatized affordable housing, where we make it possible by also making it profitable. So how do we do it? We start with one unaffordable home, and we design a shared living experience to make it more affordable for more people and more profitable for property owners. I'll give you an example. Heather was our first property owner partner. She'd previously rented her four-bedroom home in Southwest Atlanta for $1,075 a month giving her a net income of $926. But she was tired of dealing with stress, headache, and frustration that came with being a landlord, and she wanted a better way. So she came onto our platform, converted her four-bedroom home into a six-bedroom pad split using our playbook and specifications. And we had six fully qualified residents ready to move in before she was even finished renovation. Her property remains clean and well-maintained, and to date, she still has not received a single call from any of the residents on site. Her net monthly income has doubled. Meanwhile, the residents in this property are reporting more than $2,800 in monthly savings over their other alternatives. Last year, we reported 2x growth over the course of this program and 1,500 residents on our wait list. Today, I'm pleased to tell you we've grown 10x since then, <laughs> with over 40,000 resident signups. We now have over 500 active units are collecting well over $60,000 every week. We're opening in Houston just in a few months. We're spending zero dollars in supply-side marketing due to virality, and we're creating $2.8 million every year in savings for our members. But we still have a long way to go. There are 43 million total rental households in the US, and 14 million are singles and couples just like Laura, earning less than $35,000 a year. $100 billion a year, total addressable market, and there is still not a single recognizable brand in this entire segment. We're accelerating our lead, though. Having closed our seed round this past April with an established group of VCs and social impact funds from across the country, and a recommitment from Techstars tech and Cox Enterprises, who of course knew us best, We've earned over $450,000 in non-dilutive competitive grants, and we've welcomed new partnerships with local employers and an array of nonprofit social service providers. We built an amazing and diverse team of dreamers, technicians, and operators who continue to change the world, one room at a time. Last year, I asked you to join us. This year, I'm going to show you how. Starting tonight, PadSplit is offering a new initiative, allowing homeowners to list any of their vacant rooms, garage apartments, or in-law suites using our services. Whether you're an empty nester with lots of extra bedrooms, someone who just wants to join the movement, or perhaps someone who's a first-time home buyer trying to break into the market and pay off some student debt, you will now have access to all of PadSplit's vetted members and our professional management services. We believe the people who work and serve in our communities also deserve an opportunity to live in them, and now they'll actually have that chance. The barista who serves your morning coffee, the waitress at your favorite restaurant, the cashier at your local grocery, the teacher in your child's school. You have the power to make a profound impact and change someone's life 
and earn extra income for the space you're not even really using. The housing crisis is still one of the biggest and most intractable problems facing our generation. But together, we have the power to change the world one room at a time. So please, join us. Dwell Social is bringing collectivized bargaining to neighbors. They um, are aggregating uh, deals for these neighbors and uh, service providers like them because they don't have to travel all over the neighborhood to uh, provide their service. Where UPS and Dwell Social intersect is around the area of density. We deal with the problem of density on a daily basis. How do you deliver more packages to fewer houses? I'd say Dwell Social is solving home services by helping you band together with your neighbors. The idea of a collectivized bargaining on a local scale, that has never happened before. So it's my pleasure to introduce Alan and the Dwell Social team to the stage. My name is Alan Shulman and I suck at taking care of my home. I know some of you, maybe most of you feel my pain, but really I don't have any excuse because I'm a home builder. These are some of the homes I've built. I know great contractors and I know what I should be doing to take care of the most valuable thing I own, but I still don't do it. A few years ago, a neighbor asked if I wanted to join him and another neighbor to get some tree work done. He thought if we banded together, we might be able to save some money. I needed to get the work done. It sounded like a great idea. So my neighbor went out and he found the contractors. He got the competitive bids. He even negotiated a group discount for all of us. And I literally did nothing except save $250 on my tree service and mark a big item off my to-do list. Why isn't this happening more often? Why aren't all of us leveraging the power of groups to get more work done? Because let's face it, the homeowner struggle's real. Our to-do lists are getting bigger, not smaller, but we don't know what to do, we don't know who to trust, we don't know how much to pay, and even if we did, like me, it's still a pain in the ass to get anything done because we have to do everything on our own. I'm sure some of you are thinking there are already a ton of companies out there that are addressing this exact problem, but did you know that 90% of the time, contractors are still found offline? People aren't going to Google, they aren't using Angie's List, they aren't using HomeAdvisor or any of those other companies because they're primarily focused on helping you find contractors. They're not focused on the real problem, which is making the entire process easier, less stressful, and more affordable. But things are starting to change. Leafmore, a thousand home neighborhood right here in Atlanta, is doing something different. They're starting to band together to get their trees trimmed, their homes painted, their sprinklers serviced. They're even banding together to get products and services like laundry pickup and delivery, mobile dog grooming, and fresh produce from local farms brought to them at a discount. Together, they're motivating each other. They're saving money and they're getting more work done. They're benefiting from the power of their neighborhood just like I benefited from the power of my neighbors, except they're doing everything on Dwell Social. I'm the CEO and the co-founder of Dwell Social, and I've been in the home services space for 25 years. My last startup was acquired by Angie's List a few years ago. Dwell Social is unique because we empower neighborhoods. We aggregate demand for almost any project or service into neighborhood groups of homeowners, and then we leverage the power of those groups to get competitive bids with group discounts for, any, for everyone. And we don't just empower homeowners, we empower contractors in multiple ways that set us apart from our competition. First, we provide the best contractors an incredible opportunity to get multiple jobs that are all close to one another in one fell swoop. No more wasting money on gas, no more wasting time driving from job to job, and less opportunity for traffic to totally screw a contractor's schedule up for the day. Second, we charge a success fee when a contractor gets paid. We don't charge for leads, we don't charge for advertising, we don't charge for marketing, and because of these savings and these efficiencies, 
contractors are now able to pass real savings on to their clients without impacting their underlying margins. So how does someone join a Dwell Social neighborhood group? It's easy. You can join directly from a Dwell Social email or from a Facebook or Nextdoor share or directly from your Dwell, your Dwell Social dashboard. And then like I did a few years ago, you just wait for a neighbor recommended contractor to call for job details and then you select the contractor of your choice. This process is so easy that 35% of our new users are now joining more than one group. Here's an example of how this works. Seven homeowners recently joined a garage floor epoxy group. And after reviewing competitive bids from, uh, with group discounts from neighbor recommended contractors, they elected to get the work done. Each homeowner saved around $300 by letting us do all the hard work. The contractor made almost $19,000 because of one simple phone call from Dwell Social and through only one of Dwell Social's neighborhood groups. And Dwell Social generated almost $600 in revenue doing what we do best. Homeowner wins, contractor wins, Dwell Social wins. And this process is happening over and over again, not just in Leafmore, but in four other neighborhoods in Atlanta. Our new focus on acquiring customers through homeowners associations and neighborhood groups is providing us with an incredibly low cost of customer acquisition. And because we can replicate this process over and over again in the 350,000 other homeowners associations and neighborhood groups around the country, our path to attacking this $400 billion market is crystal clear. We're currently focused on providing all of our homeowners in our five Atlanta neighborhoods with the best homeowner experience we possibly can. And we're thrilled that since we started Techstars, we've actually seen 200% month over month growth in new projects joined. This is a great metric for us because it tells us that people love what we're doing, that they're actually getting their neighbors to join Dwell Social with them, and they're getting work done on our platform. This idea is a big idea, and it's a disruptive idea, but our team is the team to pull this off. My co-founder, Daniela Tomash, has deep subject matter expertise in the home services space, just like I do. And our experience runs just as deep on the group buying side. Our other co-founder and our CTO, Mike Cerna, just happens to have been the founding engineer for a small little startup called Groupon. I used to suck at taking care of my home, but I don't anymore. And as we continue to build out the Dwell Social platform, nor should any of you, the days of happier homes, of empowered neighborhoods, and of better and more productive homeowners is here. Because as we've said since this journey began, Life truly is better when we all work together. If you live in an Atlanta community or neighborhood and want to get on our waiting list, please shoot us an email at founders at 12social.com. And if you want to follow our progress over the next few months, please follow us on Paper Street at track12 socialcom Thank you very much. As a past president and CEO of Sign Up For, I've seen all kinds of problems in the meetings and event space. Believe me. Meter is changing the game. Meter offers what I believe to be the industry leading experience for event management. They've eliminated the barriers of upfront costs, technological complexity, and multiple solutions to bring a truly enterprise grade solution, not just to large industries, but also to smaller organizations that wouldn't have been able to play in that space. They're willing to put themselves out there and try things um, and see how they work, and I think that's an invaluable skill um, for a business like theirs because I think it's going to um, uniquely position them in a place where they're ready, to, they're ready to succeed from day one because they're not afraid to fail. They are fundamentally changing the way that communities do events. It's my pleasure to introduce Meter to the stage. Wow, I'm Steven. This is Patrick. Patrick manages the University of Virginia's events calendar. And this calendar, like most others, is what you typically expect when it comes to managing events. Now, what you don't see is this, the rest of the event management process. Patrick is spent, Patrick spends all of his time across this entire process from taking care of 
Eventbrite, and ticketing, and WordPress to maintain his brand's integrity. From the time this event goes live and until it ends, Patrick has to take care of registrations, check-ins, gift receipts, and reconciliations, making sure that all these ticket sales and donations go to the right place. But the reality is, Patrick doesn't have to manage just one event, but thousands of events each year across hundreds of alumni chapters. And as you can imagine, this gets overwhelming fast. Patrick is spending a lot of time and money across all of these disjoint applications, and this setup is the best option that Patrick has on today's market, until today. Hi, my name is Steven, and I'm the CEO and founder of Meter. And Meter started after I graduated from UVA, where I experienced this problem, except on the other side, trying to find the events that Patrick was struggling to manage to engage us, his alumni audience. And it's because Patrick, he was bogged down in all these different applications. The pain Patrick was experiencing was real, and it was huge, and that's when we realized how big of an opportunity this was. And just to make sure that what we witnessed wasn't just a one-off thing, we traveled up and down the East Coast, talking to each alumni office, and behind every one of their calendars was the same exact pain that Patrick felt too. And that's where we started, here in higher ed with Patrick, quickly realizing that there's a Patrick in every college. It turns out it wasn't just higher ed. There's a Patrick in K through 12, a Patrick in healthcare, in arts and cultures, in corporates and nonprofits. Patricks are everywhere. And all of these Patricks combined sit on top of this $10 billion addressable market. This market landscape, isn't a novel discovery. It's an already established one. From Blackbaud, an old incumbent where the last time this space was innovated was over 40 years ago. Let me show you how Meter makes Patrick's life more simple today. So this is Patrick's Meter platform. And what you see is his homepage. So Patrick needs to create an event. He'll fill in all of his relevant event details. And he'll also pick the group that this belongs to. In this case, he'll pick the Alumni Association. Patrick also has the option to add a donation allocation out of the hundreds that he manages to this event. So in this case, he'll pick St. Jude's Research Hospital. Let's go ahead and create this event. When this event finishes publishing, it becomes instantly accessible for his audience to see. So me being an alum, I want to get tickets to this event. So let's check it out. We'll add our tickets. And we're feeling generous today, so we're going to add a donation to the end of the checkout. And we'll complete our checkout. Confirm this purchase. And when this order completes, I'll receive an email with my branded tickets, completely customizable by Patrick, and an IRS-compliant gift receipt for that donation that I just made. That ticket sale and that donation are already on their way to the correct bank account, ready for payout, and Patrick has been completely hands-off up to this point. For every event and order, for every ticket sale and donation, this is all now kept in one place for Patrick to manage. So now that we have our product built out, Meter generates revenue in two ways annual licenses on both our web and mobile app, and a percent of payments on both our ticket sales and donations. We've been able to execute on selling to the enterprise, and we're going to be expanding our enterprise offerings with a self-service approach for both free and paid subscriptions to Meter. Organizations will be able to sign up and get their own branded version of Meter without talking to a single person. So where are we today? We have a product that's live with multiple paying clients that thousands of end users interact with daily. We've closed our pre-seed round. We have customers in three of the seven market verticals without customizing a single line of our product. We're planning to release our turnkey solution by January 2020, and we're currently focusing our efforts in recruiting and building out our existing team, to which I'd like to now introduce to you our first team member, our head of product, Dmitry Nietzsche. University of Virginia graduate with a degree in economics, started as our first intern in 2017 to what I now consider the rock of meter. I simply couldn't have done this without him. And my name is Stephen Lee, University of Virginia graduate with a degree in mathematics, with prior work experience as a data scientist, the following clients such as NASA, 
IKO, FAA, and the FBI. And together, our team has taken what is an outdated and inefficient process for event management and given people like Patrick a seamless end-to-end -end solution to allow them to stop spending time behind computers and getting back to what's most important, engaging with their communities. If you like what you saw today, or possibly know a Patrick yourself, we'd love to have a chat. Thank you, guys. My name is Brian Schatz. I'm the VP of Sales and Solutions at Coaster Cycles based up in Missoula, Montana. And the way in which we use street metrics and why we love using them is that it allows us to, to really kind of capture data on our products as we have them and, and actually really just doing something that's kind of forefront and leading technology, especially for us as we build bikes for businesses. So what I like about street metrics is our ability to do third-party media measuring for our experiential campaigns on our vehicles, but also being able to connect the physical and digital world with online retargeting. I'm excited to introduce and invite up to the stage Stu Dansby, the Chief Operating Officer of Street Metrics. In the early days of the internet, this was how you advertised. Advertisers paid for spots like these for the same reason they paid for spots in newspapers and magazines. A lot of people saw them. But advertisers weren't really sure how many people saw them, and they knew nothing about their audience. This led to a truly pivotal moment for digital advertising. Something big was about to change everything. The cookie. The cookie allowed advertisers to accurately measure how many people were seeing their ads and track their audience's behavior all over the internet. This caused digital advertising to explode. Fast forward to today and we find ourselves in another pivotal moment for advertising. Not for digital advertising, but for outdoor advertising. You may not know this, but the placement of ads on vehicles is the fastest growing segment of outdoor advertising in the US. And soon, you'll see ads on rideshare fleets, autonomous vehicles, and alternative forms of mobility. The problem with this space, just like the problem with banner ads in the late 90s, is measurement. How can we measure moving ads seen by moving people? Many said this is impossible. It's not impossible but it's not easy either. The digital advertising industry was built with measurement in mind. Oceans of data make it easy to measure the impact of your ads. The outdoor advertising industry is still trying to figure it out. Stationary ads like billboards don't provide much data, which makes it difficult to measure their impact. But it's relatively easy to measure how many people see a billboard because well, it's standing still. But when your ad is moving, and so is your audience, just measuring how many people see it becomes a big problem. I'm Stu Dansby, COO of Street Metrics, and I'm excited to tell you how our technology has solved measurement for moving ads. So how does it work? Well, if you have a mobile app on your device, you are likely transmitting your location data to this app. Our platform tracks the path of a moving ad and compares that information to anonymous location data from mobile devices. From there, we can measure the number of devices in proximity to the vehicle along its journey, which means that for the first time, we can accurately measure impressions from moving ads. But we take it a few steps further. When we measure a device near a bus ad, for example, we also capture that device's unique ID. With this unique device ID, we can do a lot of cool stuff. I'll get to that in a second. So if you are an advertiser or a media seller, what might you see when you log into our dashboard? Well, you can visualize when and where your ad travels and overlay impression data to see how many people saw it and when and where it got the most exposure. Perhaps you'd like to learn more about your audience. Well, having those device IDs I mentioned a moment ago, we can report back to you on their demographics, and even their consumer affinities, like if they are organic shoppers or coffee lovers. But what's really cool is that we can also serve digital ads directly to these same devices. Meaning, you, the advertiser, can reach your audience here and follow up with them here. This is how our technology is connecting the physical and digital worlds for outdoor advertising. So, how do we make money? Well, our customers are owners and operators of vehicle media. So transit authorities, outdoor advertising firms, and local operators. We work on a subscription model. 
and charge a monthly fee per market and per vehicle for our audience measurement and insight data. Our customers then become our channel partners, licensing those device IDs to advertisers for hyper-targeted digital campaigns. This allows media sellers to earn more money from their existing placements while providing advertisers the tools they need to effectively reach their audience. And since we started Techstars, or rather, when we started Techstars, we were only tracking 30 vehicles across a handful of markets. But I'm excited to announce that as of October 1st, we are now live in over 50 markets and are measuring nearly 2,000 vehicles every month. That's 58x growth in three months. Thank you. It currently puts us at $10,000 monthly recurring revenue, and we fully expect to be at 80 by March. In addition, we're piloting our technology with three of the largest outdoor advertising firms in the nation, Lamar, Curb, and Vector Media. In the U.S. last year, a record high $8 billion was spent on outdoor ads. Of that, $4 billion was spent on moving ads. And this is only expected to increase with the rise of rideshare and autonomous fleets and the advent of alternative forms of mobility. And street metrics will be there to accelerate the growth of this market with our measurement and engagement technology. Drew Jackson is our CEO and founder. Drew grew up in the transportation industry and has a strong background in outdoor advertising. In fact, he built this technology for himself after realizing no one had solved measurement for moving ads. I've spent nearly a decade in digital media operations, most of that with a top agency in New York, and I've touched every side of that industry. Drew and I are supported by a team of capable, skilled, talented specialists and engineers who are hungry to take this thing to the next level. We are in our cookie moment for outdoor advertising. The cookie brought measurement to digital advertising, just like Street Metrics is bringing measurement to ads that move. We are positioned to become the standard third-party measurement provider for the space, one that both, both media buyers and sellers can trust. We are truly excited for the future, and we are looking forward to commercializing this technology across the industry. If this sounds interesting to you, come find me after the show. We can have a chat. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great evening, y'all. Coworks is a management system for co-working spaces and really any shared use facility. What they have built is so unique and so desperately needed by communities who want to try to connect that it could serve not only co-working spaces but also larger enterprise companies and their teams and universities and chambers and really the opportunities for them ahead are endless but I, I do know that they're going to grow and succeed and do amazing things. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Deshaun Brown, CEO of Coworks, so he can show you this incredible product that all of the co-working spaces are raving about. The way that we think about work and office has fundamentally changed. I, like probably a lot of you all, worked in a traditional office like this. Lots of cubes, lots of khakis. But today, I work in a co-working space. This is HQ Raleigh. It's a local co-working space in North Carolina. My team and I work here, and we love it. We have flexible monthly memberships, free coffee and beer, and there's weekly events in the space. But more importantly, we share this space with other exciting, innovative companies. You see, for us, co-working is a better way to work. And that's because with the community and the amenities, it's much more than just office. It's hospitality, it's service, it's space as a service. And it's the future of work. And all of this is possible thanks to Jess. Jess is the manager of HQ Raleigh. And she makes sure everything runs smoothly for not just me and my team, but every other team in the space as well. And Jess is incredible. But we realized that she was really, really struggling. And that's because managing a co-working space is super hard. There's a lot of moving parts. And as a small business with a small staff, Jess is forced to wear a ton of different hats. So really, she's doing much more than managing an office. She's managing billing for multiple different companies. She's the receptionist for us and our guests. She's the conference room scheduler, head of sales, the head of marketing. The list goes on and on. It's a lot to manage. 
And we found that this is happening in co-working spaces all over the world. But I'm not talking about the brands that you probably heard about or read of in the news, because in reality, the co-working market is made up of mostly independent co-working spaces just like HQ Raleigh and Jess. Let's take Atlanta, for example. There's over 40 different independent co-working spaces spread across all the different major neighborhoods. We're in the middle of a massive shift in real estate, and in the next decade, one-third of all office will be co-working. But because it's such a fragmented market, co-working managers like Jess are stuck using paper spreadsheets and Google calendars and dozens of different systems just to keep the spaces running smoothly. The way that we think about office has fundamentally changed, but the tools that we use to manage them have remained the same until now. I'm Deshaun Brown, I'm the CEO of CoWorks, and we make operating and working in a co-working space effortless. We are the operating system that powers this modern workplace. Our manager dashboard completely automates the major pain points of operating a space, and our member app provides a seamless experience for the people who work there. So let me show you how it works. Cowork starts at the very beginning of the member lifecycle, allowing customers or co-working spaces to easily manage their visitors and their guests. Our automated billing system makes collecting payments for multiple different companies on multiple different plans and cycles as easy as clicking a button. And our room booking suite makes it super simple to manage multiple different calendars shared across multiple shared conference rooms. And of course, all of this is experienced through our beautiful member app where companies like mine can book rooms, join events, and leverage the power of the member directory. And this in turn creates a vibrant community ecosystem in the space. And people love using CoWorks. Since joining our platform, Jess and the HQ staff have saved over 10 hours a week on operations. And with that precious time back, combined with the ease of use of our onboarding and billing platform, we actually made it so easy for them to sign up new customers that we helped them increase their co-working revenue by 60%. Thank you. We operate on a monthly SaaS-based model based on features, and with our per-campus fee, we can grow and scale as our, as our customers succeed. And since joining Techstars, we've increased that customer base by 40%, and we're busy making our product even better while onboarding those new customers <clears throat> and continuing to evolve the product. We're happy to say that we are now at over 23 different co-working spaces paying on our platform, including locations around the world. And that's 5,000 co-working members using our platform every single day. So as this industry continues to grow and evolve, large traditional workspaces will move towards that space as a service model as a better experience for their employees. And we are the tool to help them manage those spaces. Today, we're piloting CoWorks at MetLife, a global insure tech company to manage their innovation space. And NC State University, who we signed and onboarded while in Techstars, just opened up a 30,000 square foot co-working space on campus, powered by CoWorks. <laughs> co-working is just the future of work. There's over 50,000 spaces, independent co-working spaces, all around the world, and over 50 million square feet of co-working in just the U.S. alone. And this industry is, con is projected to continue to grow at a rapid pace. But we realize something. This isn't just a real estate trend. This rapid growth is the result of a cultural shift in the workforce. Today, 50% of the U.S. workforce consists of remote, part-time, and freelance workers. This new workforce demands flexibility and community and not long commutes and monotony. And technology has shifted the way that we think about other industries like travel and transportation. And we will do the same with office. As we continue to grow our network of independent co-working spaces, we can use our technology to connect this fragmented market. And as more big companies move to an increased remote workforce, they can leverage our platform to provide their employees 
with nearby flexible workspace and empower them to work better and avoid those long commutes. I have an incredible team behind me. We're super passionate about this industry and we have a deep knowledge in technology, workspace, and service. And we have an unbelievable team of advisors that have industry experience from the world's leading companies. The way that we think about the office has fundamentally changed, and we are the operating system that powers the modern workplace. So join us on our mission to power the future of work. Thank you. For Talented, I see them really changing the way that enterprises uh, train employees, promote employees, and frankly, view the growth of their employee base. They're changing the entire way that the HR department will function. It's a really disruptive idea, and they've got a great approach to it. They are taking on a, a market that really hasn't seen a lot of attention from the entrepreneurial community, and to see a startup come at it with this kind of game-changing product, it's just exciting, it's a green field, and I think they're poised to really take it over. It's my pleasure to introduce Danvers Fleury and Talented. Good luck, Danvers, and have a great demo day. In 1978, Michael Jordan was a sophomore at Laney High. There was an unwritten rule. Sophomores couldn't play varsity ball. Well, a sophomore made the team that year. Yeah. His name was Leroy Smith. <laughs> and he was chosen over Michael because he was taller. Today, like young Michael Jordan, millions of employees work at small to medium-sized organizations that struggle to effectively identify and invest in their potential. When you take four hours that you did not have to do a team building exercise where you learn nothing and your employer learns nothing about you, it is unfair and wasteful. When someone receives a leadership development opportunity based on who they're friends with, it is unfair and wasteful. When 93% of employees say that they would stay at their organizations longer if we invested in them, but that's how we're trying to invest in them, it's unfair and wasteful. And at Talented, we believe that it's time to stop waiting for the future of work and time to start defining it. So, let's take a look at the world's first fully automated professional development and discovery system. This is Sam. She's been a project manager for the last two years, does great work, a little on the quiet side. Today, she feels stuck and unseen. But that's about to change because her organization just subscribed to Talented. She begins by meeting her virtual concierge. She decides to name Wesley. Together, they make two key decisions. She will work on skills that improve her performance in meetings and, as a reward, receive a series of mentorship sessions from her organization's COO. She logs into our web app for five to 10 minutes a day, initially mastering the art of giving and receiving feedback. She practices virtually, is assigned real-world missions, uploads evidence when she's done them. The better she does, the harder it gets. Day by day, she works towards her goal until she achieves it. Then she sets a new one. Her HR manager used to be stuck issuing boring online trainings that no one liked and career development plans that no one looked at. Now, he's overseeing strategic initiatives, like their new corporate culture plan. Her employer used to only have information about how people performed. But now she has access to unbiased, forward-looking data on their potential de-risking raises and promotions. And Sam, she had one foot out the door. She was working on her resume. Now, she's being invested in automatically based on her effort and merit. Every day, she sees herself and her career progressing, which is as it should be. Talented joined Techstars as a microlearning platform based on a deep well of research in the fields of neuroscience and behavioral economics. 80% of our learners went on to apply a new skill at work within one hour of practice. But 
We were trying to improve the system when we needed to become the system. So 10 weeks ago, we began building on top of our original product, and four weeks ago, we began sharing our new invention with organizations. When the fit was right, they joined our closed beta for free in exchange for signing a letter of intent. Well, here's how we did. In three weeks, we procured enough letters of intent to reach $15,000 in monthly recurring revenue. And we think there's more where that came from. Because in the United States alone, there's over 216,000 organizations with 50 to 5,000 employees. With a small direct sales force, we can increase our MRR to over 80,000 by the end of next year. Talented was engineered by Kurt Grandis, who's been featured in Popular Mechanics and Popular Science, and holds an MS in Neurobiology from Duke University. Our team of producers, Screenwriters and instructional designers work tirelessly to ensure our success. And my name is Danvers Fleury. This will be the ninth startup I've been a part of, four of which have exited. And like Michael Jordan, I'm a proud Tar Heel. I got my MBA at UNC as a Dean Scholar. However, in 1986, my family didn't know if I would be able to go to college. That year, I was diagnosed with numerous learning disabilities. But, guided by the insights in these test results, and supported by people who cared about me, who refused to give up on me, I was able to discover what I could be good at. And here I stand before you today with a shot at my biggest dream. And at Talented, we believe that everyone deserves a shot at their biggest dreams. <laughs> and so to our partners and our users, here is our wish for you. When you come home from work, may you feel supported and invested in, even though you're not perfect. And may you feel comfort and accomplishment in knowing that you are growing every single day. Thank you. Great job, everybody. Everybody, what did everybody think? Was it good? I'm so proud of these teams. They've been working so hard. Um, before we end tonight, I'd like to introduce Barry Gibbons. He's the new managing director of the Cox Enterprises Social Impact Accelerator powered by Techstars. Barry's an engineer from right here at Georgia Tech. He founded and exited his previous company, Mansoor, in Atlanta. And he now runs an investment fund called CoLab that focuses on filling the funding gap for black founders. Barry has spent the last seven years trying to make Atlanta a more inclusive startup ecosystem. And we're excited to have him join us at Techstars. Barry. Um, I am extremely excited to be joining the Techstars family. And more importantly, I'm really excited because I'm doing it in a way that I can run a program that's focused on impact. Um, you guys heard Alex talk earlier about Atlanta and how we've been talked about as the Silicon Valley of the South. but. I think we can one-up Silicon Valley. Um, I think we have a lot of stuff going for us. He mentioned statistics about us being the number one film capital in the world, the, the music capital in the world. We have 26 Fortune 1000 companies right here in our metro area. And with all of these things put together, I think we are positioned perfectly to do tech differently. We're able to build products, as Dave mentioned earlier, for real people that solve real problems. And as we listened to Pat Split talk earlier, I started getting chills down my spine. Those are the type of companies that are coming out of the city of Atlanta. Companies like Pad Split, another tech stars company out of Atlanta called Gooder, Enrich Her. These are companies that are solving real world problems and making real impact that are founded right here in the city of Atlanta. And as you guys got chills listening to Pad Split speak earlier, in January, we're gonna be launching a program focused on social impact 
that will lead to us in April at our demo day having 10 companies giving you those same chills through our two-hour demo day in April. And I want to invite everyone to come out. You'll hear more info about the program. Uh, we just closed the applications yesterday. Um, and so we have a fantastic, we went through hundreds of applications, and we'll be dwindling that down to the top 10. And so be on the lookout for more information about the program, and we'll see you back here in April. Thank you. All right, before we wrap, I wanted to share a few more things uh, and do some final sort of thank yous. If you'd like to connect with any of the founders tonight, uh, you can go to paperstreet.com and select the uh, Atlanta Accelerator and you can get the email updates from anyone you saw tonight. You can also email the founders directly, founders at whatever their domain is, or you can email me. Local mentors are the real magic behind Techstars. They are local founders, investors, domain experts, and they spend time with these folks and they open their networks to them. We had 100 mentors offer to, offer to help this year. Thanks for all the mentors for supporting our founders. Every Wednesday night, successful local founders join our class to tell their about their startup journeys good, bad, and ugly. The founders who joined this year included David Cummings of Pardot, Jewel Burks of Partpick, and Scott Voigt of Full Story, and a bunch of others. Thanks so much for taking time out of your schedule to tell our founders your stories. <laughs> Michael, Rachel, and Tyler ran Techstars Atlanta for three years before I took the program over this year. Everything we are doing is built on the outstanding foundation that they worked so hard to create over three years. Thank you, Michael, Tyler, and Rachel. <laughs> Techstars Atlanta would not have been possible without Cox, but I wanted to recognize a few people on the screen who dedicated some extra time and energy this year to the program. I'd like to specifically call out Tim Howe and Kim Shriver. Tim was the person working most closely with the Techstars program for the first three years of the program, and Kim has that role now. They both dedicate an incredible amount of time and energy to helping these founders and this program. Thanks so much, Tim and Kim. <laughs> this week has become a very important one for startups all over Atlanta. It begins with this event, Techstars Atlanta Demo Day, and ends with the largest venture conference in the Southeast of Venture Atlanta. Allison and the Venture Atlanta team work incredibly hard, and we love this partnership. Thank you, Venture Atlanta. <laughs> this year, Nebo, uh, a local agency, worked with our founders to help create some of the presentations you saw tonight, and Jittery Joes provided the coffee during the entire program, <laughs> which is just as, just as important. So thanks to Adam and Nebo and team and Michael, the Jittery Joes team. These are the global sponsors for Techstars, AWS, Cooley, Microsoft, Silicon Valley Bank, and all these, uh, all the, these are national sponsors. They, don't, they aren't just logos to us, they also buy our founders lunch, uh, and they give us all kinds of perks and support. So thank you for the Techstars global sponsors. Before we introduce uh, the Techstars staff this year, I'd like to call the entire class up to the stage. It's not just the founders behind me who sacrifice for these startups. When people decide to go all in on an idea, it takes total effort, so there are always people behind the scenes supporting and suffering as well, thanks to the friends and family who supported these founders. 
I'd now like to thank the program manager of Techstars Atlanta, Hannah Turner, and invite her onto the stage. Sometimes during the program, I've overheard people say, Dave runs this program. That is simply not true. Hannah runs this program. Everything that you see happen behind the scenes, everything you see day to day is managed by Hannah, and she does a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Hi, my name is Hannah Turner, and I'm the program manager for Techstars Atlanta. Before I talk a little bit about these incredible founders behind me, I wanted to highlight the equally awesome associates who worked in the Techstars space with us this year. Alex, Sam, Witt, and Jackson. <laughs> you guys step up a little. Um, <laughs> Alex couldn't be here the entire program, but he left a strong impression on the class. After he left us for grad school at Wharton, multiple founders talked about how much they missed his help, specifically with his expertise in brand, product, and storytelling. Sam was my right-hand woman the entire program. I always knew that I could count on her to get the job done. She took active steps to improve the program, and we will continue to implement those ideas in the future. I seriously don't know what I would have done without her. <laughs> Beyond being a market research whiz, Wit impressed us all with his in-depth knowledge of the startup world. He helped many of the companies. In fact, one even wanted to add wit to their team slide since he was such an integral part of their journey. <laughs> and then there's Jackson. Jackson has been with us since January and helped recruit the current class. And during the program, he was solely responsible for getting our founders investor ready. He also knew how to pump me up when I was feeling stress, which meant so much to me and helped me get through the tough times. Without their hard work and enthusiasm, this program would not have been the same. Please join me again in thanking them. I feel like the past three months flew by. This picture was taken on the first day of our program. So many things have changed since then. We had a great time together and overcame a lot of hurdles along the way. Being an entrepreneur is hard enough, but it's especially challenging when you're pulled away from your family and friends for three months. And on top of that, during our program, two founders had babies, three got married, one founder even got married this past Saturday. And, yeah. and Jackson got engaged. <laughs> Can you imagine adding a newborn or planning a wedding to an already grueling program? Well, this class is so supportive of each other that I think they could have overcome anything. Dave and I will truly miss everyone who is leaving Atlanta, and we look forward to seeing the amazing things you all do in the future. And finally, Dave. <laughs> Dave has a special connection with founders, and it was really cool to see that in person. The founders felt like they could go to him when they needed ideas about their company, but also for emotional support. I learned a lot from Dave during this program, and I can't wait to do it again next year. Let's all give Dave one more round of applause. Please take your phones out. Take pictures with these tags. This is the Techstars Atlanta class of 2019. That's our show for tonight. Thanks for everyone for being here, and thanks for supporting Founders Everywhere.